Welcome back. So in this next video we are going to talk about volcanic activity in the gorge and also volcanic activity in Portland, um, specifically the boring lava field. So the volcanic activity in the gorge should hopefully look familiar. Uh, our first uh, field trip and along with our second field trip we looked at some specific stuff that's happened here. So I would definitely look back at those materials to help you out here. Uh, so for Mount Hood, um, there were most recently uh, we've had that outburst flood that occurred due to mostly just rainfall, but it produced very similar deposits as what we would see from a lahar. So it gave um, us a good idea of, of what a small potential eruption could produce. In, in that case, if you remember, we saw pictures of uh, the road being washed out up on 35 and 26. The bridge that was taken out, we looked at what was done up there to clean that up. And also some of the destruction in some of the valleys nearby. So that's the most recent outburst flood. Uh, a lot of skiers notice some um, sulfur gases being emitted when they're up skiing on the mountain. And that's just normal activity. There's a normal background earthquake activity that occurs uh, every so often, but uh, nothing nothing to, to raise any alarms. However, this is an active volcano, so uh, the potential is there for another eruption. The uh, most recent one that actually produced some sort of concrete results and material for geologists to, to, to check out and measure was in 1805 AD. Lewis and Clark saw some um, uh, abnormal discharge coming from the Sandy River, which is why it got the name Sandy River, a lot of debris was coming down because there was a small eruption. There was one a little bit more recently, but it, it wasn't uh, recorded very well, and there is no debris left from that. It was so small. We also looked at some of the lahar deposits that exist in the upper Hood River Valley, and some lahar deposits that made it all the way down the Hood River and across the Columbia River. I'm not going to get into too much detail here because you'll be able to read all about the, the activity seen up on Mount Hood and the past activity, so make sure you check that out. Old Maid, Eruptive Period, Polale, all that good stuff. So definitely check out all that material that is posted in the, the readings this week. So the next item uh, uh, would be Mount Adams. Same thing here. Uh, we talked a little bit about this one on our field trip. We see some volcanic debris along the White Salmon River, very similar to Mount Hood, although this, this volcano does not have as much seismic activity as Mount Hood, Hood sees. So again, take a closer look at the USGS website for Mount Adams to go through the eruptive history of, of that mountain. Um, definitely a, a good thing to do to uh, study for your quiz this week. We also have volcanic activity here in the gorge. Besides the volcanoes, uh, we see the Columbia River basalts all up and down the gorge. So if you drive along 84, you drive past these constantly. So uh, we looked at these during our first field trip in several different locations in between the Dalles and Hood River. These are no longer active, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, these did erupt from fissures that formed in eastern Oregon and Idaho during, due to hotspot activity below the crust. So scientists now believe that these basalt flows are related to the Yellowstone hotspot when it was uh, located really, really close by. These flows were highly effusive. What that means is it had a very, very low viscosity. So these lava flows could go from one side of the state all the way across and reach the ocean in some cases. There were 350 lava flows that occurred in this time period from 6.7 to 5.5 million years ago. The majority of these lavas that were erupted were in the first uh, a thousand, uh, sorry, first million years or so. Not all of these reached the ocean. Some of them only traveled maybe a mile or two. Some of them were very small, some were really thin, some were really big. It just depended on what was happening um, inside the Earth at that time. So we can see on this map here the extent of, of all of the lava flows that we see in the Pacific Northwest all compiled together. So uh, the gray area that we see on here would be where we find the Columbia River Basalt. So you can see they reached the coast in some cases and we can see them uh, traveling all the way back here to the border of Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. So those fissures 
those cracks in the earth would have been somewhere near uh, the borders of these states with each other. In the hot spot, the Yellowstone hot spot, uh, we see first evidence of, of that activity roughly down here uh, on the, the border of Oregon and Nevada. Uh, so you can see here the McDermott uh, location uh, in, uh, in Oregon and Nevada would be the first one about six million years ago. So that corresponds um, uh, pretty closely to, um, to that uh, hot spot. Sorry, 16 million years ago. So that corresponds to, um, to the, the age of these these Columbia River basalts starting about that time and then as the crust moved over that hot spot Oregon was was pulled away from that activity and so the the decrease that we see over time makes sense uh, because the hot spot wasn't close by there wasn't that source of magma and so the basalt flows stopped so uh, just to, to refresh your memory about what we saw in our field strip here we can see um, the stop in the Dalles where we saw the nice columnar basalts at the top of this cliff and the pillow basalts on the bottom so where that lava flowed into water river or lake some sort of, of, of water feature that was present at the time and then we can see these layers here uh, in the Dalles being tilted um, in the gorge so we see that a lot up and down the gorge because we are actively moving we have a convergent boundary nearby so the Pacific Northwest is actually rotating as a result and causing all these rocks in the middle to crumple due to that rotation. So these basalt group groups have actually been broken up into different categories um, and you can see see all those those listed here and this is based off of chemistry of the rocks, what the actual lava flows look like, so how the columns are shaped, are they small and short and skinny, are they bigger, wider, taller, um, What's the chemistry like, like I said before, and then looking at the magnetic properties of those layers. So all of these basalts have little tiny magnetic minerals present in them. So when that lava flows over the surface, they take on the orientation of the Earth's magnetic field. They take on that polarity, we call it. And once that lava flow cools, that little mini magnet is then stuck, frozen, in that polarity at the time. So we can look back at all of these layers and see how the Earth's polarity has changed over time. We see a shift actually now. We can measure how it's changing over time. Uh, the North Pole moves around. It's not a, a permanent static uh, location. It, it shifts and also it sh changes in intensity as well. So we can look back in those rocks and just see how it changed over time. We can then take that information and compare that information to other basalts or other um, rock layers that have magnetic minerals stuck in them. So for example, we look at the ocean floor off the Oregon coast and we can see the same polarity, the same strength, the same location of the North Pole frozen in those rocks too, which is pretty cool. The boring lavas are another feature that we see uh, uh, in the Portland era area mostly, uh, it does extend a little bit into the gorge. Uh, these started around 2.6 to 2.4 million years ago near Oregon City. And then they started up again about 1.6 million years ago north of that area near Mount Scott and then shifted east towards the gorge near a large mountain about 1.3 to pretty recently about 60,000 years ago. These are typically found in clumps, clusters of vents in different areas. We see low, small shields, some cinder cones that pop up in the Portland area. A lot of them are parks, you may notice. Um, a good example uh, of that would be Mount Tabor as an example. Um, these are typically basaltic to basaltic andesite in composition, and the activity is associated with, with the Cascadia subduction zone. These vents are extinct, the ones we see in Portland and into the gorge, but the source of, of that lava, the boring volcanic field, may not be extinct. Scientists are still not quite sure if we're going to see another um, uh, pop-up of these, uh, these vents in a new location as a result. So looking at a map here, we see the Portland area. Here we have the Columbia River, the Willamette River, Troutdale located right here, Boring Oregon in the center, which is what these vents are, are named after. This shows you all of the vents. There's 95 in this map. Some of them are named, some of them are not. You can see some of those names down here. And um, 
you can see there's several clusters of, of those vents. So to look at a, a, a less busy map here, we've got the gray background is all the surface topography, and then the orange and blue shows the boring volcanics, and then the purple, which is kind of hard to see, the purple is actually Cascade Volcanic Products. So we can see here how it started down here near Oregon City, some clusters, a couple clusters over in Beaverton, activity shifted up here, and then we see it shifting east into the gorge, and we see some actually up in Washington as well. And in the gorge, we also see the remnants. We see what's called the volcanic neck or core of one of these cinder cones um, that's uh, left uh, due to that erosion of the Missoula floods that came through the gorge. So we only see that center core left behind. And when you uh, drive in the gorge, you can see evidence of, of more of these in some cases. So to, to wrap things up for this video, look back at your field trip documents to help you look uh, to uh, uh, determine a lot of the volcanic activity in the gorge. Also check out the USGS uh, Cascade Volcanoes Observatory website. It gives you all the nice details about the volcanic history of the area, specific volcanoes like Mount Hood, Mount Adams, and then these Columbia River basalts, along with the boring lava field. Um, so these are all some things you should look into uh, to uh, find more information for your quiz this week.